All right, let's jump in to the most entertaining news of the day. You've probably already seen this. Uh, if I if I'm the one breaking this news to you, I apologize. Um, and so, Kirsten Cinema. You may know this name. You may know it. You may be aware of the name Kirsten Cinema. And if you are, chances are your mind is not doing so well at the thought of this wretched, disgusting piece of human fucking garbage. And so, Kirsten Cinema, who basically what she's doing is she's leapfrogging Joe Manchin on the cringe. Everyone was saying, like, Joe Manchin last year was like, I'm going to switch my party if y'all keep bullying me. I'm Joe Manchin. Look at me. Right? And then Democrats pick up a seat in the Senate. Now, no, right? Warnock won in Georgia. If Warnock lost in Georgia, would Kirsten Sinema do this? Probably not. But Warnock won in Georgia, cementing a 51 Democrat Senate. So what does Kirsten Sinema do? <laughs> what does she do? <laughs> All right, check this out. Cinema leaving the Democratic Party and registering as an independent. Ah! Ah! Now again, Joe Manchin, right? All the tea leaves or whatever pointed to Joe Manchin for doing this. But Kirsten Cinema has decided, you know what? Fuck that other fuck that old coal baron ass bitch. I'm gonna jump over that guy's face. Uh, and he got leapfrogged, so. Then you see this little photo. I don't know why there's like a, you know, I don't need that, you know, play button there. But just this photo, you know, just, I hate Kirsten Cinema. If you ask me like top 10 dumb motherfuckers in Congress, Kirsten Cinema might be at the top of that list. You know, and I'm factoring in Tommy Tuberville, factoring in like Matt Gates, I'm factoring in like Jim Jordan. Like she's, she's that fucking stupid, right? It's crazy ass shit. Um. Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema is leaving the Democratic Party and registering as a political independent, she told CNN's Jake Tapper in an exclusive TV interview. Quote, I've registered as an Arizona independent. I know some people might be a little surprised by this, but actually I think it made a lot of sense, Sinema said on Thursday. Interview with Tapper in her Senate office. I've never been nearly in any body bonds. I've never really tried. I don't want to, she added. Removing myself from the bodies that you do not have. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever, who cares what she has to say. Sinema's move away from the Democratic Party is unlikely to change the power balance in the next Senate. Democrats will have a narrow 51 to 49 majority that includes two two independents who caucus with them, Bernie Sanders and Angus King. While Sanders and King formally caucus with Democrats, Cinema declined to explicitly say that she would do the same. Now again, this is the thing. She's gonna, she's, she doesn't want to give all of the cards away up front, right? She wants to be in the news for weeks. That's what she wants to do here, right? This is a plan. Is she gonna caucus with Republicans? Is she, people are gonna be writing op-eds about it. People are gonna be doing video essays about it. People are gonna be, you know, talking about it on CNN. Is she gonna do it? Is she gonna, is she gonna be a true independent? What's gonna happen? Whoa, All right? So people are gonna opine on this shit for a long ass time. Who knows? Just for so she can get those headlines because that's what this bitch is all about. She's an attention whore. She's a fucking attention whore. She's a stone cold dumb fuck attention whore. Right? That's what's going on. On here. She did note, however, that she expects to keep her committee assignments, a signal that she doesn't plan to upend the Senate composition since Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer controls committee rosters for Democrats. Quote, I don't come into work in a day, it'll be the time. I'm gonna do come into work in a day, but I'm gonna do it. But Cinema's decision to become a political independent makes official what's long been an independent streak for the. I love the creative writing here. Like, she's not in. Like, this idea. Can we stop? Just America, dear America, please stop with this independent bullshit. Please stop. Please stop with this ind. Oh, I'm not left, I'm not right, I'm something else. I'm not Democrat, I'm not Republican, I'm independent. Can we stop with that? I'm an independent thinker. No, you're not. No, you're not. Independents are fucking stupid. Now again, before you get your fucking panties in a bunch, because I know, pff, right, they're twisting right up. Before you fucking fuck up, right? Democrats, even dumber. Republicans, even dumber. But that doesn't make independence somehow like so Oh, I've seen through the duopoly and not, like you're not like a super genius, you're not Albert Einstein, you're just another form of fucking dumbass, okay? So again, this idea that like, oh wow, she's her ideological she doesn't have an ideology, right? This is what you need to understand. She doesn't have an ideology. Her ideology is uh this is what happens. This is her ideology. Ring, 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 ring! 
Oh, hi! You want to donate money to my campaign? What do you want me to vote on? Oh, great, I'll do that. Ring, 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 ring! Oh, you want me to vote on this? That even though I voted on the opposite ideological point of this like a week ago? Great. Oh, uh, can, you, can you add extra zero to that? Oh, excellent. Right, that's, that's her job. That's her ideology. She answers the phone. Whoever's gonna fucking give her money to whore herself out, that's what she does. That's her whole political purview. That's not independent thought. That's not having an independent streak. That's just being a fucking corporate whore, okay? And there's that's it. That's it, okay? Jesus fucking Christ. But again, CNN with the creative writing here. Basinema's decision to become a political independent makes official what's long been an independent streak for the Arizona senator who began a political career as a member of the Green Party before being elected as a Democrat to the U.S. House in 2012. The like, again, this is not an independent streak. Right? She is a fucking whore, and her particular brand of whoriness is whoever will pay her the most money for her to say, Ooh! or, Ooh! in front of the fucking voter rolls, or the, the guy who, whatever, in the Senate. You know, when she does a, oh! <laughs> right? This isn't like, she's not like this fucking, like, again, this, we need to really, like, the, the word independent, man. Like, people, for whatever reason, they think that the word independent carries some, like, fucking logical, like, I'm above the fray bullshit. It doesn't. It fucking doesn't. These are valueless, rich, trust fund baby, loser fucking cocksuckers they're not independent thinkers right they're not oh i'm going my own way no they're losers okay i need you to understand that so whenever you hear there's gonna be a lot of bullshit you're gonna have to wade through right independent oh you ever meet someone who's like oh what 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 you know what, who do you vote for I'm an independent. Well, that, first of all, that didn't answer the question, but thank you for telling me that. How do you know someone's an independent? They're gonna fucking tell you. Why? Because these motherfuckers think being an independent makes them the smartest motherfucker in the world. Like, you ever meet independents, right? They're like Andrew Yang, kind of like Joe Rogan motherfuckers. Like, these are not smart individuals, right? The average indep- Now, I would say I consider myself an independent. I'm a registered Democrat only to vote in primaries uh, because states that I've lived in before had closed primaries. Could I change my voter registration? Probably. Do I care? No. Why? Because my voter registration is irrelevant to me. I don't fucking give a fuck about my voter registration. Anyone that cares about what voter registration party affiliation that they're at, like, Jesus fucking Christ, these motherfuckers are not even trapped in the matrix, but they're trapped within the matrix, within the matrix, within the matrix. Oh yes, my party affiliation is independent, good sir. I have really figured out the problems with America. Right, anybody that gives a fuck about their party registration, I'm sorry, but again, I need you to get the fuck out of my face. And I got one thing to say to you. Well, I don't have one thing to say to you, but I know someone who does. Only the really... I hate to say this, but those with the lowest IQ. Again, independence, man. I mean, I'm sick of this fucking shit. Cinema wrote an op-ed in the Arizona Republic released fly Friday explaining a decision, noting their appro her approach in the Senate is upset partisans on both sides. When politicians are more focused on denying the opposition party a victory than they are in a... Yo. I can't with this stupid fucking bitch, man. And when I say bitch, I also want to say whore, but bitch just sounds a little bit better. But she is a bitch whore. She's a whore bitch. We can create a new compound word for this fucking goddamn whore. Um, even, or rather, when politicians are more focused on denying the opposition party a victory than they are on improving America's lives, the people who lose are everyday Americans. Now, again, what the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? Can we convert this to English? What party has been obsessed with denying the opposition party a victory? The Republican Party. Now again, Democrats have had a majority in Congress, but the Senate has this bullshit rule called the filibuster, right? The filibuster doesn't exist. It's not in the Constitution. Republicans just made it up. They made it up. I guess they were Democrats, the racists in Congress made it up in, uh, you know, 1880s, 1890s, and it just expanded. So. What they do 
is they denied the opposition party, which is, in this instance, the majority of party, a win. Now, what did they just do this? Now, again, last week, I'm old enough to remember that last week, a Senate bill for seven days sick leave for railroad workers lost in the Senate with 52 votes. It had 52 votes, a majority. If you read the Constitution, it says majority votes in the Senate means it wins. 52 votes, it lost. How is that possible? Republicans just said, oh, filibuster. Oh, yeah, filibuster. And then they went home and jerked themselves off, right? So now, this is, I'm old enough to remember this. This is a week ago, right? This is a fucking week ago. Who, like the idea, I don't, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how cinema voted on that shit. I'm going to be honest. Someone look that up for me. I would like that information. I'm not going to look it up. I don't care. It doesn't affect my argument. But can someone tell me, right? In what universe is this applicable, this concept, right? This one here. When, in what universe is this applicable to both parties? Tell me. Tell me what universe this is applicable to both parties. Now, again, I think both parties have a lot of problems. Republicans are factually, right? This is not an opinion. This is not up for debate. This is provable. Look at their voting records, okay? Factually speaking, I don't, I'm not, again, I know this might trigger some people. Facts are a really hard thing for people to understand. Factually, Republicans vote in favor of corporations at the injury of workers, right? They vote in favor of bosses and management and corporations at the expense of workers' rights. And again, seven-day pay sick leave fails with a 52 vote. That's another example. Democrats, now again, also pretty fucking garbage, right? Democrats, for the most part, I mean, look at Kirsten Cinema. She was a Democrat garbage ass party but if you compare them to the republicans right they are slightly better on workers rights slightly better slightly and i and again i'm talking about like as thin as a sheet of paper but it is relevant it is relevant when you vote you want to vote for who's going to get the best outcome right so it is relevant that they're slightly better but the idea that this stupid fucking corporate whore is going to say this as if it applies to both parties, I need you to understand, okay? This is fucking nonsense. This is nonsense. But again, we don't live, now I say this all the time, we don't live in a world where there is such a thing as language. Language as a concept, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not, go it's not going so well. It's a failed experiment. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the United States of America. Right. In the United States of America, the primary language that people speak here is English. Now, a lot of people here speak Spanish. A lot of people here speak other kinds of languages. Right. But the primary language and how we communicate in this society in the United States of America is English. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of words. Freedom. What does that mean? You don't know what it means. No one knows what it means. You ask 100 people what freedom means, you're going to get 100 different answers. How is that possible? Freedom has a definition. It has a definition. It's real. It's a real word that exists that is defined. You ask 100 people what that means, it means that every, I'm telling you, I would come up with a different answer than the person next to me. They would come up with a different, 100 people, you ask what freedom means, they will give you a different answer. How is that possible? There is no such thing as language. The concept of language is a failure. It doesn't exist, right? And that is very staunchly visible in this fucking situation. When you look at this fucking line, when politicians are more focused on denying the opposition party a victory than they are in improving America's lives, the people who lose are everyday Americans. That doesn't mean anything. Though their words, these words have definitions, but when grouped up in this fashion, it means nothing, right? Because it's not factually coinciding with the world that I see. Like when someone says the sky is made of, uh, you know, W's and dog turds, right? I, you know, that is, those words have definitions, right? But then I look up at the sky and I don't see any of those things, right? So those defined words do not correlate with the world as we see it. And so as a result, if someone is able to say that and they really mean it, whatever whatever we think about really mean, I mean, it's possible cinema is lying the whole way and she knows that she's full of shit, but who knows, right? We can't really tell. But how is that possible that someone can say something like that? How is it possible that someone can say, it is, in I am in favor of freedom and yet I want to restrict people's access to going to a doctor if they're an adult? How is that possible? How, how can, again, these words don't have meaning. 
They, they are not defined in any way that makes sense. Now, I treat the English language, right, in a very strict way. I look at the definition of a word, and I use that word in accordance with its definition. That is a rare thing in the United States of America. I need you to understand, if you are someone like me, you read the, you read the dictionary definition of a word, and then you use that word in a context that makes sense with that definition, that is rare. You are an extreme minority if you're someone like me, because most Americans, they don't know what these fucking words mean. Most Americans read and write at a fourth grade fucking level, right? They're just fucking stupid, right? And so that's what allows this, it, that's what allows this fertile ground for this fucking garbage. Again, politicians act like this because they know that you are a fucking moron and that you can't see through them. Now, when I say you, I'm talking about the average American. Why and how can politicians say this stupid fucking garbage? Because they know that only a small fraction, like we're talking a percent of a percent of the population, are going to even see what they're saying. And then an even, like, again, infinitesimally small fraction of that are going to know what this person is saying is bullshit. And so they just say it anyway. They don't care. They get away with it. And then guess what? Kirsten Sinema, you know what she's doing right now? After this op-ed got out? You know what she's doing right now? Oh, how may I help you, sir? Oh, you want to give me money so that I can vote in a random... Oh, thank you. Can you, uh, 200, 300? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, oh, would you like me to vote? If I oh, yes, yes, I will vote that way. No worries. $500,000? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're going to offer me a job when my term is over? Oh, that's great. I will... Yes, absolutely. That's what she's doing right now. I'm telling you, as you're watching this video, if you're watching the live stream, maybe if you're watching this video like seven years from now, I, I can't tell. But if, if you're watching this video anytime in the remote vicinity right, of this news story happening, that's what she's doing right now, right now, right now. I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, at this very moment, she is on the phone with donors right now trying to craft what her next independent streak is going to be. So again, I don't want to read the rest of this. I don't fucking care. Um, but again, this is an example. How did we get here? How did we get here, right? Now again, I'm going to take a note out of George Carlin's, uh, you know, playbook here. Garbage in, garbage out, right? Americans are fucking stupid. America, and I'm talking about it as a whole, right? As the net, uh, you know, result of Americans. You know, again, there's some really smart Americans, right? Really smart Americans, but there's also a lot more really fucking dumb Americans, okay? So when you have a population that is, as a whole, a majority motherfucking morons, this is how you get politicians like Kirsten Cinema. This is a representation of our country. Our country is a bunch of apathetic, loser, low IQ, poorly educated. They don't even care about educating themselves. They don't care about bettering themselves. All they care about is when can I afford my next Wendy's meal? Americans are fucking disgusting, evil, moronic, selfish, cocksuckers and that is how we got this congress now you can talk about big money big money is a problem but would big money be a problem if america's uh, america's population knew about big money and knew how bad it was and actually voted in a way that was against big money if you if you had a hundred percent of the population was like big money's bad you know what they would do they would vote against it and it wouldn't be an issue but why is big money such a problem in politics why is dark money such a problem in politics why because corporations know that if they craft a television ad, right, in certain districts, and it has a certain, like, musical track, or a certain sort of, like, talking point, they know that the zombies are going to see that and go, well, shucks, maybe I'll swing my vote in the other direction. Right? That's why you see these purple districts, so-called, these tight races, so-called, you see them flooded with ads. And usually, whoever had the most ad money to spend is the winner. Why? Because Americans are fucking sheep. They're zombies. They don't think for themselves. They don't have any sort of internal thoughts. They don't have any sort of identity that isn't wrapped around what they heard on the news or what they heard from their uncle one day at a fucking barbecue. Right? They don't fucking think. Americans are fucking stupid. Americans are fucking stupid. That's how we got here. Right? So again... You want to, oh, how do we get, how, how do we get out of here? I don't fucking know, but I can tell you how we got here. And it's because you, maybe if you're watching this, 
are not one of the people I'm talking about. But again, you, as in the Americans watching this, as America as a whole, and I should say we, but you know what? I, at this point, <laughs> I'm backing off, okay? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of this. But anyway, you, not me, not we, because I consider myself above it all, right? You, America, fucking dumb. We got dumbass motherfuckers running all over the place. And that's how we got here. That's why we have to deal with Kirsten Cinema in the news. Why? Because Americans are fucking dumb. That's it. They're fucking dumb. Okay? Dumb motherfuckers. So, congrats, America. You got another leader of an independent... She's going through an independent streak. Whoa! Wow. What does that mean, an independent streak? Don't ask too many questions. Don't ask too... What does that mean, that her streak is independent? Whoa, buddy. Whoa. Don't ask those kinds of questions. We don't like questions around here. Anyway, there you go. I did a longer segment on Kirsten Cinema than COVID. What a world... Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Jay Willikers. Myla Resson says, Fact. When I watch commentary like this, I simply do not understand why Andrea does not have an audience of millions. Well, as I said... Americans are fucking stupid. It is impossible for me to get an audience of millions because Americans are too dumb. Like, if I'm being as, as optimistic as possible, I would say my particular message would appeal to, at most, 1% to 2% of America would be interested in what I have to say, right? 98% of America would hear my show and get triggered and whine and cry like little babies, right? So... Yeah, that's that's the maximum. And then of course, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to actually get into the ear of 1 to 2. But I'm just saying 1 to 2% of America might have similar they might enjoy my show if they had the opportunity to see it, but that would never happen because Americans are fucking stupid, so I would never get to that point. Speaking of Noam Chomsky, that's the manufacturing consent theory. Um Trying to catch up on the chat here. Americans supposedly support progressive policies, yet don't support progressive politicians. I'm done. I'm done. I, you know, a lot of people, like, you might see this on other left-wing shows. I'm done. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. But I'm done with this whole America's really progressive bullshit. That's a cope that I've ever seen. It's a silent majority meme that the right does, but lefties do it all the time. Oh, Americans overwhelmingly support gay marriage or overwhelmingly support marijuana, but do they vote that way? No. Americans overwhelmingly support gun control. Do they vote that way? No. So it doesn't matter. Actions speak louder than words. And someone says, I support universal health care. And they propagandize against a free, safe, and effective vaccine against a deadly pandemic that's already killed millions of people. Guess what? They don't actually care about those things. So I'm done with pretending that Americans at large or writ large, whatever fucking proper grammatical term is, right? I'm done pretending that they actually give a fuck about anything that I care about. I, I'm done. They don't. Americans are too fucking stupid. Americans want to have their shiny little toys and their gizmos and gadgets and they want to ignore everyone else. So I'm done with the cope. Fuck that cope, right? I'm, I'm past that shit. So whenever you hear someone say like America rejects this and no, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. Because if they did, they would learn about the Supreme Court. If America really rejected the authoritarian moves of the Supreme Court, you know what they would do? They would learn about the Supreme Court. They would learn how it functions. They would learn how we got here. And they would do mass protests and demonstrations against them. We saw when Roe v. Wade was overturned and Casey uh, v. Planned Parenthood was overturned, right? We had a lot of protests. Did they do anything? No, because Americans don't actually care. And protesting in this country has been co-opted and it's meaningless. I'm going to be honest. Now, again, now, I think protesting, the net positive of protesting is not to affect change in government. That is not. That is, if you ask me why I would go to a protest, it is not because I actually think this protest is going to have any sort of effective change in government. That will never happen, right? The only point of going to a protest, networking and getting yourself into the news so that you can spread your message and propagandize a positive uh, vision of the country. Those are the those are the values of protesting. If anyone thinks protesting is going to change how politicians vote, you're a dumbass motherfucker. You're a dumbass motherfucker. Did you, have you paid attention at all through the last two, three years? 
Have you seen any of these protests over the last two, three years? Right, 2020, we had mass demonstrations against police brutality, right? Defund the police gained extremely uh, large traction. Then what happened? Politicians spent a lot of money demonizing black people and defund the police activists and then gave cops a lot more money and now police brutality has increased. So now again, the protest was great. It got our message out, got positive propaganda. It, it awakened more people in a way that, that put them on a better path. It, people gained networks, people gained friendships, people, you know, met each other and are now forming organizations. That is the only value, right? The idea that we can protest to actually affect change, that's that's a waste of time. Look at Iraq war protest, waste of time. It's a waste of fucking time. So again, now again, that's why when I say it's a waste of time to protest to affect change, I'm not saying don't go protest. I'm saying go protest. But your goal at the protest should not be to affect change because that's not going to happen. You got to manage your expectations. When you go to a protest, what you should be doing, trying to meet people, make friends, try to get on front in front of those cameras, try to do something that's going to get cameras and attention, media attention. That's the point of a protest. The point of a protest is not to bully your government into listening to you because that will never fucking happen. It will never fucking happen. Why? Because the only way you can bully politicians is by voting them out. And Americans are too dumb to do that. And so therefore the protest is ineffective on that front, right? So now I say this as someone who's done a lot of protests. I've been to a lot of protests. I've been to violent protests. I've been to extremely violent protests. I've been to protests where people have gotten the shit kicked out of them. I've been to protests where there's been blood everywhere. I've been to protests where people have been violently arrested, right? And I can say every protest I've ever been to, as far as if the goal is to affect change politically, big failure, big failure. If the goal is to network, Incredible, uh, incredible success. If the goal is to get in front of the media and get cameras, incredible success. But again, protests will not affect change. And more people need to know that. When you go to a protest, you need to understand what you're doing will not affect change at all. It will not happen. The only way you can affect change is by waking up the, poli uh, the, the, the voting population of this country. That's the only way you could do it. Again, you gotta go woke. That's it, that's the only option, so. So, anyway, that's my extended ranting and raving sesh. Oh. So, I mean, this all ties into the Kirsten Cinema bullshit. It all ties into the Kirsten Cinema bullshit because that is, she is the exemplar of how we got here. How How is she in the media? How are people listening to her? It's because Americans are fucking dumb and that's it. Yes, exactly. Protests, right? Again, networking and media attention. That's it. That's it. Right? Like the idea that you're going to protest a politician and then they're going to actually vote the right way, that that's made up. Like and again, who made that up? Think about it from this perspective. Who made that up? Who made up the idea that you can protest to affect change? The US government. The U.S. government made that up. The CIA made that up. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sounding like I'm crazy. Let's get the tinfoil hat on. They made it up. They make it seem like in movies, right? In in culture, in the history books, right? And, you know, people that often make movies don't really, you know, read anything other than, you know. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on every, you know, I love movies, right? But I mean, I'm talking about like mainstream interpretations of history is that like, you know, protests have did you know like they usually point to the 1960s when protests helped our country like whatever but again that like they didn't really get anything like it like anything like uh, again I'm, I'm saying the 1960s a lot of stuff happened that was really great but like let's look at vietnam war protests didn't go so well right let, let, you know let's look at what happened to martin luther king jr when he kept trying to protest for effective change after the civil rights act and voting rights act 
didn't go so well, right? So again, they created a mythology, they being, again, the US government, CIA, has created a mythology that protests can work as long as they're contained, as, as long as we let them have something every once in a while so that they think the protests work. But in reality, it doesn't. It's a mythology. It was created for the sake of, you know, diversion. They, if Americans, if all the protesting, if all the people in America who would go to a protest actually knew what I'm going to tell you and have been telling you, right, protests would be a lot more effective, right? But they don't. A lot of people go to protest. They got their sign and they scream and then they go home without really talking to anybody else. That's not, that is doing nothing. That is doing nothing. But they think they're doing something. That's... And that, that is the danger. That is the dangerous trap. Is when you make that sign, you go out there, you stand on the sidewalk, or you're walking through the streets, and you're saying no justice, no peace, and you're not talking to anybody, you're not getting any media attention, you're not making any friends, you are the useful fucking idiot that the CIA has designed you to be. So again, I don't want to sound like I'm too much of a conspiracy theorist, but I, re I really want you to know that the idea that protest, like that the like a good argument is going to affect the politician made the fuck up purely fictitious they made it up so i don't i didn't mean for that to be so long but i just you know keep going sometimes